to shout Allah Akbar. Muslim area, okay? Alcohol, bad. This is a Muslim area. With tensions mounting, migrants start collapsing small trees onto the fence. Others, surprisingly well equipped, start cutting the wire with bolt cutters. Threats to our survival today and the threats to our freedom are the European Union, mass immigration, and this terrible Islamic ideology of submission and violence. The next terrorist attack in, in Europe. Namaskar, I'm Shreya Savate and you're watching Rhythm. For many years, the West kept on portraying itself as a messiah and welcomed immigrants with open shores. To them, the idea that their good intentions could have a far-reaching effect or for that matter, that it could lead to violence or threats of terrorism was some hypothetical idea, like it was some problem happening out there far away from them. They failed to see that they invited the problem to their homes, which was perhaps previously just confined to third world countries. We can deal with it on their soil and it's not going to touch us. But reality has a way of tapping you on the shoulder and you have to open your eyes at a certain point. It seems that that time has finally arrived. Now, after three years of intense discussions and negotiations, the European Union finally decided to thoroughly overhaul its laws on asylum and migration through a provisional agreement. While the bloc is starting it as a landmark decision, there remain multiple hurdles like getting approval from each member state. So why is a concrete decision being taken now? Has the Western world finally woken up to the growing number of asylum seekers to the continent which is rising by the hour? Or does it finally see the potential threats to their country's national security? For a long time, the European Union delayed delivering its promise of improving the migration system. But why did the European Union take such drastic steps now? Why are multiple countries emerging as advocates of anti-immigration? Perhaps the West indeed has cast aside the shackles of so-called liberalism and has instead decided to tackle these problems with a renewed sense of urgency. The latest deal signed by the EU involves discussing and agreeing on the political aspects of five laws within the European Union related to handling asylum seekers and migration, with the European Council marking all five as part of the migration and asylum plan put forth by the European Commission in 2020. Migration is a European challenge that requires European solutions. These were the words of EU Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen, who strongly supported the country's hardline stance on migration. We will decide who comes to the European Union and under what circumstances, and not the smugglers and traffickers. While several European Union members hailed the decision, some human rights groups compared it to a catastrophe and violation of human rights. These reforms will create far greater suffering at every step in a person's journey to safety, from finding themselves trapped in countries outside the EU, to their access to asylum and legal support at the border, to their reception within Europe. This transformative deal will significantly change several key aspects, including how the bloc regulates migrants' entry, moves migrants around European Union nations, and streamlines the process of deporting unsuccessful asylum seekers. The new Asylum and Migration Management Regulation also establishes a mandatory solidarity system, offering countries three options for managing migration flows. Relocate a certain number of asylum seekers, pay a contribution for each claimant they refuse to relocate, and finance operational support. No member state will be forced to accept refugees if they contribute through the other two options. Every year, hundreds of thousands of people try to immigrate to Europe. Some do so to escape persecution in their home country. Others 
try to build a better life for themselves. Regardless of their reasons, migrants are coming to Europe in an unregulated manner and the continent is overwhelmed. In addition to regular migration, the EU is also experiencing a significant increase in what is known as irregular migration, that is, asylum seekers and undocumented migrants. The European Union Agency for Asylum estimates that around 1 million asylum applications were submitted in the EU plus countries in 2022. Also, secondary movements within the EU and many applications from nationals of visa-free countries who entered legally contributed. 100,000 and 86,000 applications were submitted by Syrian and Afghan immigrants respectively between January and September 2023. In addition, there are around 4 million Ukrainians who fled Putin's invasion. Similarly, in the first eight months of 2023, the EU border management agency Frontex detected more than 2,32,350 irregular border crossings at the EU's external borders, an increase of one-fifth or 18%. The central Mediterranean and the western Balkan routes remain the most active routes into the EU this year, with Syrians, Afghans and Arab countries in Africa accounting for many detections. As per a report by Voice of America, the number of people applying for asylum in European countries this year is expected to exceed 1 million, the highest since 2016. One of the most alarming issues which has plagued the West is that immigrants who come to these countries seeking protection and security from the problems and oppression they had faced in their own countries practice the same stringent and orthodox rules of their religion which they have been running away from and above that try to impose that on the natives of these countries almost forgetting that it is they who have left their homeland and are seeking refuge in a foreign country and not the other way around. In one viral video, an Islamic cleric from the Al-Aqsa Mosque was seen praising the spread of Islam in France. He claimed that by 2050, there will be more Muslims than French people living in France. He also said that Muslims must have a country that brings Islam, its guidance, its message and its mercy to the people of the West through jihad for the sake of Allah. أصبحت على أسوار إفيانا دولة الإسلام عاصمة النمسا ورفع فيها الأذان ونحن يعني خلينا نقول لا نعول على أن مثل هذه الأرقام هي التي ستحول هذا البلد إلى بلد إسلامي. الذي نعول عليه بأنه لا بد أن يكون هناك دولة للمسلمين هذه الدولة تحمل الإسلام تحمل الإسلام هداية ونور بالجهاد في سبيل الله عز وجل تحمل هذه الرسالة وهذه الرحمة إلى الناس وبالتالي أيضا القضية بأنه سينشر سلطان الإسلام على العالم كله بإحدى ثلاث الإسلام أو الجزية أو نستعين بالله عز وجل ونقاتلهم حتى يخضع العالم جميعا لسلطان الإسلام. The recent rise in the number of asylum seekers has been a major concern for EU member states, with a widespread belief in some countries that they unfairly bear a greater burden due to their geographical location. Italy, for example, received nearly 150,000 irregular migrants last year since January 1. Out of these, 36,000 arrived by March, nearly twice the number compared with the same period in 2022. Hundreds of migrants were seen drifting towards the European shores in boats, which ran out of fuel along the dreadful route of the Mediterranean. Passengers stranded in vessels, falling on the ground after the climbing ashore, severely dehydrated and covered in vomit with no proper safety. Meanwhile, the country's much vocal debutant Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni, who rose to power during the same time captured headlines for her staunch ideas on immigration and restrictions on sea rescue charities. Her underlying displeasure in correlation with immigration again came to light after she was heard saying that apparently Islam was not compatible with Europe. I think that there is a problem of compatibility tra la cultura islamica o certa interpretazione della cultura islamica 
e i, i diritti e i valori della nostra civiltà. A me non sfugge che la gran parte dei centri culturali islamici in Italia sono finanziati dall'Arabia Saudita e l'Arabia Saudita è una nazione che a casa sua applica la sharia e sharia significa lapidazione per l'adulterio, pena di morte per apostasia, pena di morte per omosessualità. Credo che queste questioni vadano poste, che non vuol dire generalizzare sull'Islam, vuol dire porre il problema che c'è in atto un processo di islamizzazione dell'Europa che è molto distante dai valori della And it's not just Italy. The Netherlands in 2023 raised serious concern that with the increase in the number of asylum seekers, neosans and crime rates are also rising. Each incident is unacceptable and is one too many. Later in July, authorities in Germany and the Netherlands also arrested nine people from Central Asia, accused of plotting high-profile attacks, one of whom was said to have been working with the Islamic State terrorist group. In May this year, Dutch security services warned that the terrorist threat from Islamic State to Europe had increased. Terrorism in the name of Islam has claimed hundreds of lives across Europe over the past two decades, which many associate with mass migration from the Islamic world. This has shaken the continent's politics and today, Islam and migration are hotly debated topics in many European countries. The recent victory of Geert Wilders in the Netherlands election reflects the fresh anti-immigration wave in the country. Geert directly linked Muslim immigration with terrorism and called for a ban on mosques and the Quran. Although there are still multiple hurdles before Geert can become the Prime Minister of the country. Of all the countries in Europe, France is under the greatest pressure from radical Islamists having experienced a series of Islamist terror attacks in recent years. The murder of a teacher in October by the radical Islamist Muhammad, who shouted, Allahu Akbar or God is great, is just one such example. The incident sent shockwaves across the nation, prompting President Emmanuel Macron to condemn the violence, calling it yet another act of Islamist terrorism in France. France, home to the largest Muslim population in Europe, has been the target of several Islamist attacks over the years. However, the country fully woke up to this reality in 2015 when three terrorists gunned down 17 people, including the staff and editor of the infamous Charlie Hebdo, a satirical magazine. And ever since, there have been countless incidents of atrocities carried out by Islamist extremists in Europe. Meanwhile, the Israel-Hamas war has only rubbed the salt into Europe's wounds that witnessed several pro-Hamas rallies across continents since the horrendous October 7 Hamas attack on Israel. Subsequently, France passed new legislation toughening the nation's immigration policy that makes it more difficult for migrants to bring family members to France and delays their access to welfare benefits. This state of unrest caused by refugees arriving in Europe was already predicted by the UAE Foreign Affairs Minister in 2017. There will come a day that we will see far more radical extremists and terrorists coming out of Europe because of lack of decision making, trying to be politically correct or Assuming that they know the Middle East and they know Islam and they know the others far better than we do. And I'm, I'm sorry, but that's pure ignorance. In the meantime, the Greek intelligence stepped up its surveillance of refugee camps. The camps are home to tens of thousands of mainly Arab migrants who have been called to jihad by radical Islamists in response to the conflict between Israel and Hamas. And not just Greece, Germany, which has Islam as the second largest religion of the country, also issued a warning recently about the growing threat posed by Islamic terrorism, especially after Hamas's terror attack on Israel. Critics fear that an open-door policy on migration could potentially expose the continent to security risks as Europe is already suffering from Islamic extremist violence. Leaders from European Union nations also express a growing apprehension, believing that the ongoing crisis is unsettling EU society and causing a notable shift in its demographics. The previous year saw a tussle between the EU countries regarding 
who will take responsibility for these undocumented people arriving on European shores, the number of which increased more than double fold as conflict, global inequality, and climate crisis skyrocketed to subpar limits. Europe experienced a substantial influx of refugees around 2015, primarily due to the escalating war in Syria. As per the Global Trends reports of 2022, the continent became host to 36% of the world's refugees. The number soared from 7 million at the close of 2021 to 12.4 million by the conclusion of 2022. The refugee population is predominantly composed of Muslims, constituting 86% as reported by Pew. They are primarily categorized as either asylum seekers or economic migrants. Amid these demographic changes, concerns have arisen, often fueled by events such as terrorist attacks. These demographic shifts have already led to political and social upheavals in many European countries. In recent national elections in Poland, France and Germany, for instance, immigration and particularly Muslim immigration were top issues. Mateusz Morawiecki, who served as Poland's former Prime Minister, highlighted how huge Muslim migrants from the Middle East are coming to Germany, France and other European countries and who want to change the culture of those countries and those nations. We have opened our hearts and our gates for war refugees, but this is very much different from uh, huge Muslim um, migrants we, from the Middle East uh, who are coming to uh, Germany and France and other countries and who want to change their culture of those uh, countries, those uh, nations. Um, I am clearly opposing uh, to, such, uh, to, to such attempts. I, I, I'm admiring French culture, I'm admiring Spani Spanish culture and the British culture, but I also admire my Polish culture and I want to preserve it, I want to nurture it. I don't want to, it to be destroyed by um, Muslim uh, migrants coming from the Middle East or from Africa. Meanwhile, recently, the Secretary of Islamic Commission of Spain said that Muslim population living in Spain has increased 10 times in the last 30 years, exceeding 2.5 million. He also stated that Muslims who were seen as purely immigrants in the past now have an important place among Spanish citizens. As the number of migrants arriving in the European Union has increased over the last two years, so has the appeal and influence of anti-migrant political voices. Most European countries profess liberal critic values However, the migration debate is pushing them to the right as leaders try to elevate rising public concerns about migration and immigration. Take France, for example, where the parliament passed a contentious bill imposing stringent regulations on immigrants, such as heightened barriers to accessing benefits and increased difficulties for their children to become French citizens. Germany is also talking a lot about migration. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who promised to take stricter actions, is contending with mounting pressure from the right. Even the former European Union member Britain is struggling with how to address the issue. In recent months, Britain has seen some of the largest pro-Hamas rallies with tens of thousands of people taking to these streets. In Britain, immigration is likely to remain at the forefront of politics as the country heads into an election year. Like previous conservative heads of government, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is hoping to mobilize his base by taking a hard line. This anti-immigrant sentiment has already propelled far-right groups to victories in traditionally liberal strongholds like the flamboyant win of Geet Wilders in the Netherlands influencing discussions not only within the EU but also in the United States. Experts suggest that in 2024, it is poised to be a driving factor in election across Europe and even in the United States. Notably, this development comes just six months before the EU elections. But the irony here is that European Union's plans to overhaul its immigration laws and the discourse around it do not amount to any significant change. This is because, on the one hand, attempts are being made to regulate the influx of migrants, 
while on the other these people are also being allowed into the remedy the shortage of cheap labor on the continent they are merely trying to take control of who they let into the country and how countries share the burden of overwhelming number of immigrants arriving but is this a concrete solution the answer is no the reforms proposed by the european union have yet to be formally approved by the european council which represents the 27 member states and the european parliament it seems that juggling the influx of immigrants and distributing them evenly will not be enough to tackle the crisis europe is suffering from